Welcome to What's the 4 and one your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Onika McLean. Courtney Rashad and Essence Samaj is not here today, mm-hmm. but you have us. Yes, and we do. are about to get it cracking. Yes, we are. And we are talking about a lot of things this week. First of all, Sasha and Malia's first state dinner, violence at the Trump rallies, Black China and Rob Kardashian are back on social media. And the 411 would like to know, why are there so many labels when it comes to women? Black women specifically. Exactly, it's exactly. True. And we have financial consultant and visionary Eustace Greaves Jr. He will be our in-studio guest. Get your money straight, girl. <laughs> So, yes. and Kenzie will be talking about what she has in the Caribbean cook-up, mm-hmm. right? You As always. I love up. in that pot, girl. <laughs> get you always stirring up something. But first, let's get a quick take on what's popping. And the recent White House state dinner honoring Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his wife not only celebrated the bond between the two nations, but also welcomed Sasha and Malia Obama to the dinner table. Yes. That's so beautiful. They were. They were so beautiful. It was their very first state dinner, and the Obama girls were the highlight of the entire night. But their $20,000 dresses really caused a stir on social media. It was they donated. It was donated, exactly. though, right? Exactly. But you Stop. Know. What are you talking about? That's going to cripple the economy? It was donated. You know they can do no, do no right. Do no right. So, hey. But they were beautiful. And Black China and Rob Kardashian are back on social media. So yeah, Black, yeah. yes, Black China revealed that Rob Kardashian, who is a type two diabetic, now we know, um, lost weight by healthy eating, exercise, and encouragement. So she really pushed him and, and sex exercise. You stop it! Stop Black it. China, <laughs> what is she a stripper? You know, <laughs> labels, labels. We can't. Mm-mm. She wasn't. That was a job title. That's not a label. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's transcended that now, though. So if I used to be a cashier, <laughs> I'm just not a cashier anymore. But see, you, you're putting her down, though. Don't put her I'm down. not. Th- 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 no. Some people think that stripping is a viable career okay. choice. What are okay. you talking about, girl? Okay. Okay. Um, mm. What the? But she's not, she, not that now. That's all I'm she's, saying. Is it, she's not. No. Well, so what does she do? I don't know. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I see. Uh-huh, I see that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so congratulations to Russell Wilson. He got that body party. Yeah. <laughs> he locked it down with a ring on it. Congratulations, yeah, yeah. Miss Sierra. Yes, beautiful so, thing. We're happy about that. And he has a foundation called Wilson Promise. And so great for him. He's like doing wait, did you see the the photo? It's like a split screen of Sierra mm-hmm. with Future and she's like smoking something. And I didn't see and no. And then I didn't see and it. it's like when you leave a Iga and get a man. Oh. And then it's a picture of him like giving her a ring. Russell Wilson giving Sierra a ring. But remember when Future was all upset when he was like Russell Wilson was pushing his 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 son and he was like, how you gonna do that? How you gonna push my child and blah blah blah. Yeah, well, baby mother's <laughs> future stop. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. And, then, and then a shout out to Q-Tip. So let me Ooh, get this straight. So he has been named the artistic director for the uh, Kennedy Center. Oh, excuse me. Rappers Congratulations, doing Q-Tip. it. So what yes. he said was, I want to begin at the beginning. He mm-hmm. wants to give you the roots of hip hop and its culture so that you can responsibly represent it. Go ahead, nice. Q-Tip. I love him. Go ahead, Q-Tip. Q-tip. Mm-mm. And TV powerhouse Shonda Rhimes and her friends are using their voices to endorse a presidential candidate. Candidate is Hillary Clinton. Yes. Look, you're so shady. We'll be right back. You're so shady. shady. <laughs> Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. Welcome back to What's the 411. Now we have stories that are popping. Well, actually, we're popping this story because mm-hmm. we yeah. want to talk about the labels that, yes. that have been put on women, yeah. black women specifically, but really women, like mm-hmm. hoe, slut, slut, bitch, mm-hmm. tramp, yeah. stripper, heifer, heifer <laughs> mamie, <laughs> right? Yeah, mamie. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? that all, one too. All, all these things, like thought. Yeah. Thought. Yeah. <laughs> Jump off. Like, it's just so many different names, and they're all... Yeah, it all, yeah, all it is is pitting women against each other. Like, mm-hmm. you know, she's that, so that means I'm somehow better. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think that's really the problem is that a lot of times it's not just men who are saying this, which would be bad in and of itself. It's also women perpetuating it. Like, we're calling ourselves these names. 
and that's because we don't terrible. we don't see each other as one. Mm -hmm. We're pitted against each other, like you said. It's kind of right. we feel that there's no abundance and there's only room for right. one or two. So mm -hmm. you need to kind of like paint my sister in a negative light so that I somehow shine. I guess. You, oh my gosh, this reminds me of something. I, I wish I could remember her name right now. And she. Uh, She's like a reality TV star, and she's always like, she's always getting on Amber Rose. Like, Amber Rose is like always naked, and I'm a real lady, and you know, this is how a real lady is. Is that Ken, Kenya Moore? Her? Kenya no. Moore. Not Kenya Moore. Because Amber Rose has the thing too, the slut. The slut one. But that's, right. what, that's her trying to take back the power from the word. So she's like, you know what, let's claim it. But you can't you know, take I, back the power from the word. So this is what someone said. Uh, to Amber Rose when mm -hmm. she said that mm -hmm. they were like well Amber if you're walking down the street with uh, um, a police officer uniform and I run up to you and I say you know officer officer I need help you're not going to say just because I have this uniform on doesn't mean that I'm mm -hmm. an officer right? right so when you're looking like kind of <laughs> Promiscuous, slutty, well, whatever the word. Oh my God! Are. See, we back to right. labels, though. You see, we, we are we back to labels. We can't, we can't quite get rid so of it. So how do you I'm get like, rid of it? Because it, because think about it, there's really no getting rid of it. It's the situation where people say, "Oh, I can't wait to this one world." Right? Mm -hmm. I, I okay. just looked at this video the other day. It's like, take the labels off. I'm not a black woman. Mm -hmm. You're not a black woman. You're not a woman. Mm -hmm. You're just a being. Uh, yeah. No, we all we always ask, where are you from? Where's right. your family from? Yeah. But we, we because, always want to peg it. Why? Because, because that's how the human brain is. That's what we want to do. Our brain likes Who's to compartmentalize people. No, that's babies, for us but babies that. don't do that. Babies don't do that. So that is learned behavior. Because you think about that. You see two babies. They're just playing together. One baby starts because crying. Because they have no awareness. The other baby starts crying. They have no awareness. So but once they become conscious, then they're like, then they know, oh, I'm a girl. And you're a boy. You know what I mean? And, and now you I... play with this kind of toy. and you No, but that's, that's still learned. So what if society. we didn't do that? What if we didn't do that? What kind of society would we have? Well, there is this guy who was like, this couple who were like, we're, we are raising our children genderless. And seriously, it wasn't Will and Jada Smith. <laughs> <laughs> genderless, no. And they were like, you know, them no, kids look crazy. <laughs> oh, that's a label, maybe. That's like, you sorry, they look crazy. Get away. You can't get, get away with it. You can't get away with it. Your daughter can just like whatever. No, but that's what they were doing. They were mm -hmm. like, you know, we are going to let them just choose what they want, mm -hmm. and we're not giving them genders and giving them gender neutral names and all that, and letting them choose. So when they go to school, they're being looked upon as a girl or boy well, so what happens they, they homeschooled and all that stuff i don't know what they're doing beyond just like we're not giving them genders let them choose naturally what they are attracted you know to. you know a label that we we as black women wear with pride strong black woman yes right yes. strong black woman yeah but then what does that mean to me it kind of mm. means being self-sacrificing mm -hmm. and putting everyone and their feelings before First. yours so that you can handle all this stuff like the virtuous woman in the bible right she, all this stuff mm -hmm. first and she kind of is last and what i'm finding out right. that us being women being strong black women we are suffering health yeah. cancer crazy rate as opposed to our, our white count counterparts That's right cancer is killing us mm -hmm. record numbers Diabetes, mm -hmm. obesity, heart disease. Yeah, we're bosses, but we're we don't take our take it back and put it on ourselves. We right. don't make ourselves first. In other cultures, that's permitted. Right, but for so long we have to be strong for so many other people. I mean, even going back even to slave times before mm -hmm. you know, even before right. you know, coming from Africa and wherever we were coming from, it was always like you know what, I gotta be strong. My man got killed, sold off, what have you. I have to be the backbone of the family. I have to be the backbone of the community. And it's just perpetuated that. As our it? men go to jail, or as our men are being But why, you know, is, why are we, do we need to be so strong right now, still? Why? It's, it's what is hard. that? It's hard to like let that go. Let it go. It's hard to let that go. And even still, like I, I read something the other day which said that finally black people are seeking out therapists more than they have in the past, which is a great step forward. Because for a long time, we we're like, no, that's the crazy people. We just go to church. I, we just go to church. I, tell, Jesus I pray. Will, and Jesus will heal you. Yes. Yeah. And that's it. And I'm like, that's just not, that's not enough. We want you to more. shed the labels. We want you to reevaluate everything that you thought was true and make yourself first. We here at What's the 411 are a bunch of girl power going on uh -huh. here. And we, yourself whatever you want. we're trying to <laughs> rethink it. Yeah. We just wanted to make you think about it. Yes. We'll definitely. be right back. Thank you.
My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. It's tax season and we here at What's the 4 and one have got your back. Our guest today is financial consultant Eustace Greaves Jr. He is bringing more than 30 years of financial know-how to our set. Yes, yes. indeed. Welcome. 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 Thank you. It's, it's an honor to be here with you two <laughs> ladies, really. I'm a big fan. Yay, oh. we're so happy. Woohoo, we got fans. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you are the owner of the Bridge Insurance Agency, right. as well as Greece Financial Services. That is How true. did you get your start in the financial services industry? Well, I'll give you a joke. I, years ago, I was the community relations manager with Brooklyn Savings Bank. Mm -hmm. oh. And then the bank merged with Metropolitan Savings Bank. Mm -hmm. And they, the, the new culture of the bank was not exactly welcoming to the work I did. So I looked in the Sunday paper and I said, oh, look at this, something quantifiable, the insurance business. Wow. And so I interviewed at several companies, excuse me, finally decided to settle on Prudential, and I spent 13 years there. Wow. Yeah. And so what made you kind of branch up and say, you know what, I'm going to do this on my own now, start my own company? Well, um, my daughter was about one and a half years old, and she was very ill, mm -hmm. and I had built up a number of weeks of you know, time off and things like that. I said, listen, I will be back when we know that my child is okay. Right. And I actually caught some grief from them for that. And I just had such a bad taste in my mouth. I said, you know what, it's time to go. Wow. And that's what I did. I just decided. So October 20th, 1995, 20 years ago, in fact, I decided that's it. I'll start my own thing. Wow. And that's what I did. Her mother thought I was crazy, but she supported me. Wow, so how'd you, how'd you get your first client? Or did, you, did you already have clients? Or? Well, one of the blessings was I had all of my licenses. Mm -hmm. And so it was just a matter of coming out and suddenly realizing that now I'm learning the insurance business, mm -hmm. setting up agency contracts, things of that nature, letting people know where I am. And that was it, just calling every real estate broker I knew to let them know I can still get you a, still get you a binder in 24 <laughs> hours uh -huh. and what have you, you know. So it was really cool having a fax machine in the living room. And my daughter looking at me as if to say, don't you go out to play anymore. You know? <laughs> so it was really great. Freedom, kind of. Freedom, but with entrepreneurship, you, you have freedom, yet you have an even greater responsibility, I believe. Right. Yeah. So it was yeah. worth it. It's been worth it, though. It's right. been a good run. No, sounds like it. So, I mean, you know, it is tax season. Yes, it is. So, I mean, what are some of the tricks of the trade that people can use to kind of maximize that tax refund? I'll tell you what, let me, let me give you my, my take on tax refunds. Mm -hmm. They are a curse. They are a trap. Uh, why? And I'll tell you why. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what are you oh, talking about? Right? Yes, I know, but it, they're, they're a trap. I have a, I'll give you a very true story. I met, met a, a family. The daughter was working for the federal government. She was maybe a grade one or whatever it was, making about 19000 a year. So when she had a single mom, when I did her taxes, she got a wonderful earned income tax credit. She loved me. Worship the ground I walked on. Uh -huh. But I told her, I said, listen, whatever classes they're willing to give, take them. Improve your grade. And the next year, maybe she was a grade 7. So she was making 26000 uh -huh. The earned income tax refund went down, but she still loved me a little bit. A little bit. Uh -huh. Then in the next year now, she took a major leap to about $42,000 a year. I said, That's this is her. wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. But there was no earned income tax credit. And she called me all kinds of a fool and a thief, and I didn't know what I was doing. I said, no, look at the book. You don't qualify anymore. Would you rather make 19 and get, you know, an extra 4000 or earn 42 and you don't need it? Right. A lot of these credits, really, that's, I, I believe that the earned income tax credit, if I'm correct, is the largest social welfare program in America. Why do you wow. say that? I didn't even Why know that. Say that. Because so many people qualify for it, unfortunately. Unfortunately, so many, but wow. that, is, that is fortunately you need somebody. Need sometimes they need that money to take them through the first for the first quarter of the year. Sometimes families like really depend on that yeah. to yeah. For school supplies and pay clothes the, and pay the Christmas bills they shouldn't have brought. Yes, up. right. You know. Oh man, you're getting into something. You're getting kind of deep well, here. Well, no. Look, <laughs> look at it like this. Imagine if everyone in this country 
was earning the kind of money they should be earning. That's why we have this $15 an hour cry yeah, now. Which is so crazy we, to me because everything goes up. If the every, minimum wage but goes up. But I think up, everything else have goes a living up. Wage. Yeah. Uh, but but $15 an hour still makes, so now, now bread's going up. It's going up a little bit. No, it's not going up a little bit. That's the thing. Everybody has their living wage. I don't think you can live off of eight, $9 no, an hour. No, it's, it's difficult. It's right. difficult. But the other thing is, you see, I think so many people are trapped into this concept of a refund. I live all year long for the refund. Mm -hmm. Where if they would sit down with their tax preparer, not with TurboTax, not with H&R Block's program, but a tax preparer, a tax professional, and say, listen, how can I bring this future money into the present? Right. How can I take that child in dependent care credit and get that money during the year when I actually have to pay mm -hmm. these people right. that are babysitting my child? Mm -hmm. How can I get this earned income tax credit during the year mm -hmm. so that instead of giving the government a tax-free loan for 12, 13, yes, 14 months, I'll get my money every month. Because people wow. don't claim enough dependence on their W-2. That's what my uh, my accountant says. Well, like some people, they claim zero because they say, oh, I want my money at the end of the year, but that makes no sense. It makes right? no sense, but mm -hmm. it's, not even, it's not even about adjusting your exemptions. Mm -hmm. It's also taking a look at what credits you think you're going to get mm -hmm. and, then, and then adjusting, again, your dependence to say, yes, if I'm going to get this much, like you say, hey, I'm, I can add two, two, two dependents. Mm -hmm. I can add a third dependent. Right, you can add mm -hmm. so you can keep the money in check. I don't get the, a refund anyway. So. Uh, well, I mean, I'm low. Low. so is that? I mean, so is that uh, one of the biggest? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that one of the biggest <laughs> mistakes you see people tax. making? Like mm -hmm. Omika said, you know, like just de like claiming less dependents, or what is the biggest That's mistake a biggie. people make? That's a biggie. That's a Number one is they they depend on they 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 file zero and they're waiting all year long for this check. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, I had five clients so far this year who have children who no longer qualify for the child tax credit of $1,000 a year because they turned 17 last year. Mm -hmm. And again, I've become a fool and an idiot because you don't know what you're talking about. I want my $1,000. It's not yours. <laughs> it's, <laughs> not yours. it's not yours. You know, it belongs to the government, right. and they say you can't have it once that child turns 17. So I think what happens is we become so financially dependent on these credits, on these refunds, we are not doing the planning we should do. So what do you suggest we do? We should take our W-2s or our pay stubs and bring them to you and just put them in front of you and we work out a some kind of plan for the year? Right. Like, what do you suggest? No, I, what I like to do with anybody who's coming into my office new, I say, bring me your last three income tax returns. Let's see what the trends are. Because maybe their income has been going up to a degree where, you know what, I have to tell you, next year you're not going to qualify for any earned income tax credit. Mm -hmm. Both your twin, your twin kids, your, your twin boys are going to turn 17 this year. You're not going to get that $2,000 a year for the child mm -hmm. tax credit. Right. So we have to now plan for that. And those boys are going to college, hopefully. Hopefully. Right. And hopefully all those refunds from all those years have been going into a 529 plan or a Coverdell or whatever. Yeah, 529. Yeah, Explain the 529 plan because yeah. a lot of people don't know that. I've been, I've yeah. been uh, contributing to that plan for forever. Basically just a, a, you know, a tax advantage way to put away college, money for college. Mm -hmm. And as long as the money is used for college... There's no, there's no uh, hurt when, when it comes time to taxes. As long as the distributions are used for higher education, wonderful. Or right. a laptop towards the exactly. anything. It does not have to be for the actual tuition. Exactly. Anything that's anything preparing for college. That's right. college. Mm -hmm. as, long as, it's, as long as it's related to those college expenses. What about the mortgage tax? <laughs> well, this, I, I tell you what. I believe that. And you heard it here first, yes. right here on what's the 411. Mm. You heard it here <laughs> first. One of the big things in the tax code is that whenever you refinance a mortgage mm -hmm. on an existing personal use property. You have to live there. Yeah, but here's the kick. Say you refinance that mortgage in order to pay for college, in order to pay for a new car, a vacation, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to deduct that interest on your income tax return. Which interest oh. now? That, your mortgage, that new mortgage interest. 
So oh, let's the say second, the yeah, second loan. Exactly. Say the you have a second loan, loan right? Mm -hmm. Whatever interest is, whatever part of that money is not used toward the acquisition of a new property or mm -hmm. an improvement of the existing personal property, you can't take that interest as an income tax deduction or itemized deduction on Schedule A or Schedule wow. E, however and it if works. You do, okay. You get audited eventually. Well, here's the thing. I haven't heard about people getting audited, but mm -hmm. what is the one problem our nation has? Lack of money. Yeah. So what's to stop the Internal Revenue Service, which, which is the revenue generating arm of the government, mm -hmm. from saying, okay, everybody who refinanced the mortgage, please come in and give us proof as to how you use that money. Right. Yeah. Right. Never yeah. Know. Yes, I know. Right now, all the fans of the 411 are crying. <laughs> they're like, ooh, 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 no. crying, um, crying. Why? Instead of saying, what's the 411, they're saying, why 411? No, seriously. But, I mean, while we're talking about mortgage, I mean, you have helped a lot of people stay in their homes yes. who were struggling you know, with yeah. their mortgages. Yeah. I mean, for someone right now who's considering refinancing, they're going underwater, like, what do you suggest they do? You know, it's that's a, that's a tough nut. I mean, the number of foreclosures... Yeah. that we are suffering through right now, just in Brooklyn alone, yeah, yeah. are sure. comp it's, it's yeah. just off the scale. Mm -hmm. And let me just say this as an aside, once FEMA finishes the remapping of this region and flood insurance becomes mandatory in communities mm -hmm. like wow. Red Hook, Canarsie, Rosedale, Laurelton, all of the coastal communities, especially the coastal communities of color, where folks are now going to be faced with bills of anywhere from 800 to three, four, ten thousand dollars a year extra for flood insurance, wow. which will be mandated. So That's going to be the. Here's the problem. If you, you know, I knew Canarsie very well. There were a lot of illegal tenancies in Canarsie. Mm -hmm. In Canarsie. Because of the mm -hmm. basement yeah. apartments. Exactly. Right? And mm -hmm. after Sandy, there were a lot of fish in those basement apartments swimming right. around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the fact is, a lot of people have not been able to put illegal tenants back in those apartments. Or you can't get them out either. It's not really good to have those tenants because you can't, you can't, they can just not pay your rent. And exactly. then there's nothing you right. can do because it's not a legal tenancy. Right. Well, out in certain parts of Canarsie, they had to leave because there were four to six feet of water. water. Yeah, so they they had no out. choice. They, they had to go. Yeah. They had to leave. But, right. um, but, re but realistically, once these changes come in, you're going to have, you're going to have an even greater foreclosure crisis. I was out at the Rockaways, wow. I guess it was I last week, Thursday that. night. Yeah, I was out in the Rockaways Thursday night with uh, Senator James Sanders. Mm -hmm. And because the flooding situation in the Rockaways is horrendous, absolutely horrendous. And so they're going to have a series of meetings about that. They had a lot of city officials out there who were scared to death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. please don't hurt me. I just, I just work for the city. I don't make the decisions. <laughs> and um, you know, again, it's just horrendous out there. No matter what they do, you're dealing with the reality of, unfortunately, climate change. But they're building up. I know a couple of my girlfriends um, that were victims of Hurricane Sandy, mm -hmm. and what's happening is they have to build their houses That's one right. floor up. Mm -hmm. So yeah. all those renovations that, that FEMA paid for and all the insurance companies yes. paid for, yes. they're going to have to redo those things, which is so crazy. And it's mandatory. Yeah. They have the next, yeah. like, two to three years to get it done. That's right. So the construction industry, of course, is going to like you know take a huge leap. Yes. But but everybody else, everybody is crying, going to take a lots hit. and lots of tears. Crying, so yeah. what about insurance? Whole insurance, term insurance. You know, you hear conflicting uh, advice. You get a mm -hmm. conflicting advice. What do What do you think about it? Well, I'm an old whole life insurance kind of guy. Well, let me say this. Not Real, by time. Well, let, let me say this. The mm -hmm. first thing you do if you're doing a proper job for someone, mm -hmm. I'm not out there to sell a religious belief. I'm out there to make sure that in case you die, your wife or your husband will be able to take care of those babies, period. Mm -hmm. Your church will continue. Your parents who put you through school will have something to help them get by in their later years. Listen, how many parents right now are suffering because they co-signed student loans and the kids died or became disabled? Right. And now they're getting the Dunning notices saying, you must pay or else. Wouldn't it be nice if the kid had left, once they started working, left some life insurance so that things like that bill could be paid? So you're saying that even somebody who doesn't have children, isn't necessarily married, should also have yes. life insurance? Yes. Okay. You, you know, I think, if you, I think if you're living a life and there's not someone or some organization that you just love, you're not really living a life. Mm. 
Wow. wow. You know, but, but getting back to term versus whole life, uh, recently I did a, um, I, I just did a, a financial uh, needs assessment for a young family. Husband and wife, because of their mortgages, debts, what have you, the kids, they want to send them to college, each of them needed, each of them needed about $1.6 million in insurance. Now, to buy, that in, to buy that in whole, in whole life, um, be darn well impossible to do it, but you take some whole life and then you, uh, you know, blend that in with a term policy to make sure they have the coverage they need. Okay. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Never. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. The average tax takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Welcome back to What's the 411. Now, this is my favorite part. Kiss a guy! I added that. What, what is that? that what? Is, yeah. You don't even know what that is. Bum, bum, bum. No, no, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. What you okay. got? What you got? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what I have cooked in any part. Okay. okay, in honor of Women's History Month and our labels theme, which we were just talking about, I'm happy to highlight Chantel Jones, a young Grenadian American woman who is making black girl magic. How? Now, on a recent trip to Grenada, she noticed that you know women were talking about each other and being spoken about in a derogatory way, and she was like, you know what, this isn't right. I don't like this. So she decided to make some videos where she featured professionals of all different backgrounds speaking inspiration to each other and to other young girls. And she is calling it Words of Wisdom. Nice. Yes, yes. So yes. nice. Yep. Aww, I'll, I'll give you a word of wisdom. You're so creative. I think that you're beautiful. Oh, that's, that's, very, that's very nice. We like that. Okay, at the end of the series, <laughs> where she hopes to finish it, <laughs> beats cotton in a pot, beats that. <laughs> At the end of this series, which she hopes to finish actually by the end of this month, she wants to compile the interviews into a mini documentary and, you know, have it out on public access. So oh, if you, nice. yeah. So if you want to check out her videos right now, though, you can watch them on her website, www.chanteljay.com. So good for her. Guess yeah. what? Yes. I can't understand it. It's over. I can't understand it. I had so much fun with I, you. I know, but that will do it for this week's edition of What's the Born One, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. I am Onika McLean, and you need to follow us on Instagram, <laughs> Blab, um, uh, where, are Periscope. Where, Periscope. where are we? Periscope, where are we? We're Twitter, Twitter, every we're every outlet. We are there. We are everywhere. It's yes. what's the 411.com. Exactly. And hit us up on Facebook. You should mention us. We, we'll mention you on the show. Exactly. Exactly. I'm Kizzy Cox. And on behalf of Onika McLean, thank you for watching What's the 411, and we will see you next week. Bye, girl. Who's got the 411? 411, they got the 411. Who's got the 411? We got the 411. What's the 411? The 411, they got the 411. We got the 411.